What up everybody? Back again here with our time unit and today we are working on reading time to the nearest minute on an analog clock. So let's wake on up and see what's going on today. So like we just mentioned, our objective today is today I will be able to tell time to the nearest minute on an analog clock. So to do that, let's take a look at the parts of a clock. So here we have the parts of our analog clock, right? And when we talk about an analog clock, we mean a, uh, a clock that looks like this or similar, where there's an hour hand and a minute hand. A digital clock would be the one that just tells you the numbers, okay? And so our short hand is the hour hand and our long hand is the minute hand. And as you guys know that the, uh, the bigger numbers on the clock face represent the hours and then the minutes are also on our clock face. Now on this one, they're not here, but typically there's these little dashes that go on this clock. Um, and that is the minute intervals on our clock face. So when you look at how time is written, and this is what we're gonna be focusing on today, um, our hour hand, right, goes right here on our digital time. It tells us what the hour is. So our hour hand's between five and six, it hasn't quite passed six, which means our hour is going to be five o'clock because we weren't quite to the six yet. And our minute hand looks like it's pointing directly at the 10. So if I start at 12, which is gonna be zero, right? And I go five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. And again, it looks like it's pointing directly at that, which means our minutes are, are 50. So our time is 5.50. Let's take a closer look at how I came up with that answer. So the first thing is our hour hand. Our hour hand is uh, the shorter hand, okay? And our hours, obviously, on this clock are 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and then back to 12. There are 24 hours in a day, which means our hour hand is going to travel around our clock face twice in a full day. We know, like I said, that these bigger numbers are our hours. And whichever number the hour hand is either pointing directly at or is in between and just past will help us figure out the hour. But we're gonna look at some examples in doing that a little bit later. Let's take a look at our minutes. So we know that we have 24 hours in a day, but in one hour there are 60 minutes. So really when you think about what a minute is, it's 1 60th of an hour, which is fractions, and we're getting ahead of ourselves and that's okay. But our minute hand is the longer one, and these bigger numbers that represent the hours actually also help represent minutes as well, because for every um, one big number, that's five minute intervals. So when you look at this, if the the minutes directly at 12, that'd be zero. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and so on until we get back to 60. Now, just like you learned before, right, we can use these kind of to skip count our minutes. And then once the minute hand gets back to 60, it just starts back again at zero. And if you think about that, you've never heard of a time that was 260 because really that'd just be three o'clock, right? And then each of these dashes is a one minute, minute interval. Now some clock faces don't have those on them, but the ones we are gonna be using today will have them. So now we've done a quick review on the hour hand and the minute hand and our parts of our analog clock. Let's take a look at three simple steps that will help us figure out what time it is, no matter what clock we're looking at our steps for reading an analog clock. And again, this, these are for analog clocks, the clocks with the hour and the minute hands, not the digital clocks, because those clocks will literally just tell you the time. Our first step is to read the hour by looking at which number the hour hand is at or just past. So sometimes the hour hand will be pointing directly at the number, and sometimes it might be in between the one and two, but you're looking at the number, the hour that the hand just past, right? You're not looking ahead, you're looking behind if it's between those two numbers. And we'll look at an example for that. Number two, you're going to read the minutes by starting at 12 and counting by fives until you get close to the minute hand. And then if your minute hand is not directly at a big number, you're going to count by ones, right? Until you reach the minute hand 
and then you can write down the total minutes that you counted. So we're going to be using skip counting. If you've already memorized the numbers and your multiples of five, then go ahead and use that. But these, are, these steps are for people who are really trying to take it at a basic level. So let's take these steps and apply them in a problem. So my question says, what time is it? So the first thing I want to do is I want to look for my hour. Now I see my four, I mean, sorry, I see my hour hand is directly at my four. Now here's the tricky part though. Now you need to look at the minute hand because if the minute hand is before the 12 and hasn't quite gotten all the way back to resetting to zero, then this would still technically be between the three and the four, all right? If the minute hand is directly at 12 or past 12, then we know the hour hand is a little bit past four. So that's really the only tricky part. You have to kind of look at the minute hand for these types of uh, situations where the hour hand is directly at the four and you can't tell, ooh, is it before or after? That's when we bring the minute hand in. So I see the minute hand is a little bit past 12, which means we've already gone past 60 minutes. So we are past four o'clock. So my hour is going to be four. Okay, in my minutes, I can't. I don't even need to skip count by five because I'm only right here. I've been reached the first big number, so I'm just going to count by ones. I know this would be zero, so one, two, three. In my minute hand would be three, which makes my time four o three. Okay, I have to put a zero for the tens place because I was just in the ones place. I didn't get to the tens place, so the time was four o three for this one. Let's do one together. My question again says, what time is it? So the first thing I wanna do is look at my hour hand and I can very clearly see that my hour hand is in between the 10 and the 11, right? Which means you never look forward, you always look back. So we're gonna look back to the next, the last big number. So my hour is going to be 10, right? And then my minute hand, I'm gonna start at zero, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. 55 would be if it was at the 11, right? And then I'm two dashes in front of that, so that's gonna be 56, and this is gonna be 57. So my time is 10.57. That's why the hour hand is so close to the 11, because as soon as the blue minute hand reaches the 12 and passes it, my hour hand is gonna be pointing directly at the 11, and a little bit past it. So our hour hand gets closer to the next hour as our minute hand moves around the clock. Let's have you try one. So here's a you try. Go ahead and pause the video, okay? And then once you solve it, push play and check your answer. If you're not there yet where you can do one by yourself, don't worry about it. You can just do it with us um, as I go over it. Hopefully you just paused it and now you are checking your answer. So I'm looking at my hour hand. My hour hand's very clearly between the 12 and the one, which means I look back at the hour just passed. So it's gonna be 12 o'clock, okay? And then my minute hand is five, 10, so this would be zero, right? So five, 10, 15, 20, 25, all right? And I'm not quite to 30, so now I'm at 25, and then I need to go 26, 27, 28, 29. So my time on that this clock is showing is 1229. If you're doing a little bit higher level thinking, you could have skipped counted all the way to 60, which would have been 30, and then, okay, you're one mark away from 30, which 30 minus one would be 29. So either way you do it, you were using your multiples of five to help you out. So this was just a quick uh, entry lesson to reading a clock, a review. Please continue with us as we get into elapsed time in our next few lessons on our playlist. If this is the only lesson you're watching, thank you so much for checking us out. We would love to have you subscribe and like the video, leave an awesome comment. Um, if you don't like it, like the video anyway, and please come back and check out our other lessons, check out our elapsed time song. Thank you so much for spending your time with us today. Instructed Beats, out.